We begin again with the physical setting physics. This is the New York State Regents exam. We're going to be doing the 2008 version. And we will start with page two, the first page of questions. At the uh, information section of this video, there is a website where you can go and download a PDF file of the entire exam. I strongly recommend you do that and then follow along with me making marks on your copy as I will be making them on mine. Question one. The speedometer of a car does not measure the car's velocity because velocity is, well this is a vector a scalar question, and so velocity is a vector. We draw it with an arrow. And it's a good idea in questions that have multiple parts to answer one part at a time. So let's see. A velocity is a vector. Yes, it is. Vector. Yes, it is. Scalar. No, it's not. Scalar. No, it's not. Questions three and four can't be correct. So it's a vector and it has direction associated with it, or vector and it does not have direction. Well, velocity is a vector, which means it does have direction. Speed is a scalar. And it simply tells you how fast you're going, but it doesn't indicate your direction. And when you're driving in a car, that little number on the dial only tells you the speed, not the direction. You gotta look out the window to find that. Question two. A projectile launched at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal travels through the air. Compared to the projectile's theoretical path, the actual trajectory will be. Well, let's do the theoretical first. You throw it, and at 45 degrees, it will achieve maximum range. 45 degrees is the angle you launch at for maximum range with no air friction. So the actual trajectory with friction has got to be shorter. So it will be shorter, and it will be shorter. It won't be longer. It won't be longer. So there we go. So it'll be higher and shorter, or lower and shorter. Well, higher would imply that it was going somehow higher than it's theoretical. So I'm going with lower and shorter projectile. Question three. Cart A has a mass of two kilograms and a speed of three meters per second. Cart B has a mass of 3 kilograms and a speed of 2 meters per second. Compared to the inertia and magnitude of momentum, another two-part question. So let's answer the inertia question first. I'm going to draw a little picture here to help me sort them out. Cart A has a mass of 2 kilograms and a speed, velocity I'm calling it, of 3 meters per second. Cart B has a mass of 3 kilograms and a speed of 2 meters per second. Well, its inertia is a function of mass. So cart B has more inertia than cart A. Let's read the question again. Um, compared to the inertia and magnitude of A, so compared to the inertia of A, Carp B is more. The same inertia can't be right. The same inertia. Greater inertia and greater inertia. Both three and four are possible choices. And then they want us to know about the momentum. Now momentum is a uh, vector, so they simply say the magnitude of momentum, the, the number, not the direction. And momentum. Let's go find the formula for momentum. We find on our formula sheet that momentum is letter P. And over here we can find the formula. Momentum is mass times velocity. So the momentum is mass times velocity. So 2 times 3 and 3 times 2. The momentum is going to be the same for both of them. So uh, cart B will have greater inertia. Smaller magnitude of momentum? No. The same magnitude of momentum. 
approximately how much time does it take light to travel from the sun to the earth? Well, I'm going to cross out this one. 4 times 10 to the 19 seconds? That's a long time. Well, let's do the math, I guess. The formula is velocity is distance over time. So let's write that down. Velocity equals distance over time. And they want to know for time. So um, we've got to get time by itself. So velocity times time is equal to distance. And so uh, time must be equal to distance divided by velocity. So I need to know uh, light, the velocity of light, and the distance from the sun to the earth. All this information is found on the reference table on the list of physical constants. The speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So velocity is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And uh, distance from the Earth to the Sun. That's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So distance is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So I can write it over here, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That leaves me with seconds. I'm happy with that. Well, 3 divided by 15 is going to be 5. Look at our answers. There's only one that has a 5 in it. That's got to be the right answer. Now, when you divide exponents, you really subtract. So it's going to be 0.5 times 10 to the 11 minus 8, or 3, which turns into 5 times 10 to the 2. So that, in fact, is the correct answer. But uh, you can be sure it's the right answer for a couple reasons. Question 5. A rock falls from rest. Velocity initial equals 0. A vertical distance of 0.72 meters. Distance equals 0.72 meters. On the surface of a planet in a time of 0.63 seconds. Time is equal to 0.63 seconds. The magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity. We're looking for acceleration. So we go to our formula sheet. We're looking for a formula that has distance, time, initial velocity, and acceleration. And this is a very popular one. Distance equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. So we write distance equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. VI is zero, so we get rid of that entire thing. Distance equals one-half AT squared. And we're looking for A. So two times distance divided by T squared is going to be A. And on this planet, we can call it G. Calculator time. And I get 3.52, and uh, this is the closest one to that. Two stones are thrown horizontally from the top of a cliff. So you've got two stones that are going to be thrown from the top of a cliff. A has a velocity of 50 meters per second, and B has this initial speed of 30 meters per second. Okay, 15 and 30. Compared to the time it takes stone A to reach the ground, Wait a minute. To reach the ground, it's only got to go this distance. This formula we just used, um, uh, distance equals 1 half AT squared, VIT of 1 half AT squared, tells us the time it would take. Compared to that, to the time it takes stone B to reach the ground. Well, they both have to go the exact same distance. They're going to be accelerated downwards by the same acceleration due to gravity, and their horizontal velocities have nothing to do with how much time it takes for them to fall. Same distance, same time. Question 7, and actually as I look at the time constraints, uh, YouTube only allows me a 10 minute video and I'm up to 9 minutes 30 seconds. So we'll begin question 7 and 8 with our next one entitled page 3.